Let's put the key in here. Nothing at all. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. This is a T2 episode, so we hope by the end of it that we can see this car started and or come up with the mileage on it, because that's really what I've been working for, trying to figure out that mileage. So we'll see what we can get done. Okay, I got the seat moved forward and here's what's behind it. Kansas City. More burned rubble. So we'll go ahead and get those two nuts off and then get the seat out of here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this all cleaned out, get the carpet out, power wash it, see what it looks like. See what if we got any damage up underneath this one. All right, so I've got the carpet out, getting ready to uh, power wash it. I think it looks like it'll all come clean. And there is no corrosion that I can see on this side here. Like around those bolts and stuff, it's kind of rusty on the other side. There's nothing over here. So whatever water got in there was just on the other side and I'm not sure what in the world happened, but it could have been that the window was left down Copart or something. It could have been uh, when the house was on fire, the fire department sprayed water and it just happened to hit on that side. Who knows? Anyway, nothing to do on this side, so we'll just keep it open and let it air out. Okay, so I've got the driver's side seat down here now. I haven't started on it yet. You can really see the difference between the one we already did and this one. So it may not look perfect, but it's way better. So I have to try to clean that uh, embroidery up at the top. I'll do that with the carpet shampoo, I think. So let's jump on this one and get it cleaned up. Well, this one ended up being about the same. The back did really good. I mean, the back is like almost perfect. And then the, back, the bottom is just, you can see some staining. There and I mean I scrub and scrub and scrub and that's that's all that'll come out. So it's about the same on both sides. So if anybody knows of a way to get these bottom seats cushions to match the T2s, please let me know. I'm trying to find some. Okay, so here's my plan on this uh, PCM. I'm going to go ahead and. Um, try to clean all these contacts here that I see are corroded on this side and just clean all these ones that are corroded on this side just to make sure that there's good contact and the ones that are out in the car. The point of all this is I really, really want to try to find the mileage. I'm going to replace it anyway with a new one, but for what I've, the research I've done, the mileage is stored in this unit. And so if I can't get the mileage out of it, we have no clue what the mileage is really on the car. So then I'm going to drill out this flange part of this sleeve that goes through it on both sides. Just drill that, that flange off, try to knock those back out the other direction. Pull this thing apart and clean on the inside of it, the circuit board. So try to get it all clean and maybe even when that new one comes in or the used one comes in, Depending on what these terminals look like in there, I might be able to unsolder a terminal from the other one, solder it back in here, and get that one to work if the water hasn't destroyed it in there, or moisture, or whatever it was. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to drill these out. And just a disclaimer, remember I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is trial and error. It's not doing me any good like it is, so. So if 
I, I drilled it out a little bit. Let me tap around on it and see if it wants to come loose here. All right, so that's what they look like when you come out. So let's do the same thing on the other side, on the other one. Okay, so there's that one. So now, should be able to open this thing up and uh, see what kind of corrosion is going on in there. There we go. Okay, so look at all that corrosion. Ooh. And there we have our missing terminal right there. Now how that is connected or how I would get that out of the, of the one that's coming in, I don't know. Hopefully this thing, this board lifts out so that I can see what's underneath it. Let me remove these fuses and we'll see if that lets it loose. More rebullet shirts? Yeah, these things have been going like hotcakes ever since we've been telling about how good they make you in sports. Man, I wish I would have had something like that in high school. That would have helped out a lot. We bring you highlights from this year's playoff game. Attempting to continue his 75-game hitting streak, Andy Johnson comes to the plate in the first inning with two outs and two men on. Gadzooks, look at the travel on that ball. Johnson's second at bat, he hits from the left side. Lefty Jones winds up and Johnson swings for a second homer of the day. In Johnson's third appearance, Lefty looks anxious as he begins to wind up before Johnson is finished with his practice swing. It's a ground ball to third. No, folks, a ground will double. Now it's Johnson at the plate for the fourth time. He tips his cap to some variety of opposing fans. What's this? Lefty tries to throw a strike before Johnson's even at the batter's box. And those opposing fans are quieted once more. At his final advance, Johnson is checking his bat handle for cracks. Lefty tries to sneak another one by Johnson. Great Scott, another shot out of the park in left field. In an incredible display of agility and physical prowess, Johnson goes five for five with four home runs. Andy Johnson truly exhibiting grace under pressure. <laughs> All right, so I've got all the fuses out right here in this pile. So now hopefully this thing will come off of here. Yeah, whoa. So there's no wonder this thing is not working. I have no idea if that's... So if you're ever wondering how fuses work, that was like this. So the fuses went in these holes here and it pushes the slot lines these up perfectly so that the fuse goes in these little slots of these little prongs here. So it lines them up perfectly to go in there. And of course they're all corroded, but they're still, they should have been good enough to make contact on these fuses, but who knows? So this is our vinegar and salt solution. I've got it soaking for 15 minutes. I'm making sure I don't get it on any of these circuits up here, just down there on the uh, part that was corroded, which is just terminals. Um, I don't want it like in a capacitors or any of that kind of stuff. So just got it down there and 15 minutes is almost up. And once it is, we'll put it over here in this uh, baking soda and water solution neutralize the acid and then we'll wash it all with distilled water Then we'll let it dry for like two days i'm also going to go ahead and put these covers since they've still got that corrosion all in there i want to put them in the acid in the vinegar too to just get it out all right so here we have it all de corroded and you can see there's still some discoloration on the actual board but all the corrosion is gone off the terminals and both sides. You can see on the right here, see that copper colored on those terminals there? That's where it was just, it was already, the corrosion was eating it away and it had eaten that uh, silver coating off of there, whatever that is. I don't know if that's actual silver or what it is, but the copper underneath is showing. And there's our hole that we've got to fill with our pin once we get it okay so here we have the dash of the t2 where we have smoke damage up here pretty bad like i'm pretty sure i was gonna have to uh 
buy a new dash, tear this out. But I read on the interwebs <laughs> that there was a way that you could use uh, mix vinegar, equal parts vinegar and baking soda together with water and scrub. And I started right there on that corner and it looks like it's getting that smoke out. But... So I'm gonna try it on this, on this little stained area right here and see what it does. It'd be awesome if I didn't have to tear all this apart and just took the stains out. All right, so definitely way better. There's the part I haven't done yet. There's the part I've done, but I could still do a little bit more. I see little, few little spots that aren't, as, didn't get as good as I need to. And then I did one little spot up there, look at that. So it's gonna take it off of that different kind of plastic too. So it's gonna be a lot of scrubbing, but it will come off. It's just gonna take some elbow grease. All right, so the parts I've been waiting on are finally here. And that is the used body control module and the new body control module. And the reason I bought this particular one, I bought it on eBay, is because whoever took it off the car just clipped all the wires. And so I have all these plugs. So I can use the uh, terminals that, that one damaged one in the car, I can fix with one of these good terminals here. Just take out of that plug there. And then another reason is that this. I don't know what this came off of. It could have been like a, I don't know, Cobalt or some other Chevy product. Um, they use these same modules. But I think if what I've researched right, if, if the only problem in our car is the module, then I can hook this one up to it and it should start. Even though um, it came from another car, it should still start but it will have like the other cars mileage and all that will show up on the dash. So it's a good test to see if that is the main problem is that BCM. And if it still doesn't start, then we've got some other problem somewhere else, I think. And we can't use our new one yet until we figure out what, what's going on. So this is the new one from the dealer. So I got modules all over the place, but first thing to do, is uh, take the this plug back here out of this one and then remove one of these um, little plugs and then we'll fix repair the spot in the solstice where we had the uh, damaged plug up there the wire that's missing the end on it so we'll repair that solder in a new piece right there and get this fixed back to normal and then we'll hook up the used module we just bought to all these wires and see if we can actually get this thing to turn over. Okay, so here's the plug I need. So I'm gonna pull one of these out. This is the lock. I'll use that as a pick for my hair later. Okay, so that just pulls right out after you unlock the little clip. So that's the thing I need. So now I'll go um, solder it into the other one. Control module. Okay. And then we got the red one. And our blue connection up here, I believe it is. This one goes here. Okay. Now it's all connected. So the moment of truth, let's get the key and see if we have anything different on our dash. Let's put the key in here. And I've got no seat, so I gotta try to push the clutch. <laughs> Nothing at all. But this is totally different because we have 
like flashing lights on the um, AC. We got no check engine light. We got no anything up on the dash. So that means it's not communicating with that BCM. Okay, so I've thought about it a little bit. Let's just move forward with uh, the main, the plan at the start, which was to harvest the uh, plug off of this, which we already did, and get it put in. And then we'll open up the new, or, or the uh, used uh, BCM, this one right here, like we did the old one, and try to remove a pin from it um, to solder back into our original one, connect it in there and see if we can get anything. Okay guys, so while I was taking this apart, pulled all these fuses out and I saw a bunch of blown fuses. So that could be why this thing didn't try to start our car out there. So before I yank it all apart, I'm gonna go ahead and put this put the stuff back together, all the fuses back in here the way they go, with real with good fuses. I won't be able to screw these terminals back in now since I've got this pulled out, but I should be able to push them in there enough to make contact and uh, before I break it open and actually start taking these uh, pins off, let's try it one more time. Let me get all the fuses and rel relays and all that back in there and we'll go back out to the car. Okay, so here's take two. Got it back in there again. And those plugs might be hard to get out without those being able to have the bolts in there <laughs> to help get them out. <laughs> now this time, let's see if we get anything. Still got the check engine light, looks like. Radio says locked. Oh man. <laughs> okay. So we have a started car. So nothing in here is uh, on the dash, like now there's no check engine light, but we don't have any mileage or anything. That was what it was, just some bomb fuses. So I don't think, it, yeah, none of the gauges are working at all. They're not even showing a RPM. So at least it's running. So we know that's what it was. It was definitely the BCM. So once we get, we'll take this back off after we let it run a little bit, um, and then we'll. Uh, try to get that pin out and get it transplanted hey guys thanks for watching this episode of rebuild it we hope you enjoyed it and man it felt good to finally hear that thing run you, you never uh are comfortable with the build until you hear it run for the first time so it could have been some major motor problem with it so uh this is a t-shirt giveaway week so if you'd like a t-shirt like this just comment in the comment section below t2 you'll be entered to win we just ask that you have a usa address only and uh Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share share us with your friends and we'll see you on the next one. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.